Golden Horde amasses its cavalry to dominate the Eastern world. Will they be able to succeed this day? Well, we'll find out in this 3 vs 3 Medieval Kingdoms online battle. How's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to a 12-12 Medieval Kingdoms online battle. Today, we are taking the rulebook and throwing it out the window, as there are very few rules in this battle. Basically, players were allowed to bring as much cavalry and archers as they want. Normally there's like a rule on like max 4 missiles, max 4 cavalry, however in this engagement there are no such rules so this should allow for some really really interesting cavalry maneuvers um, and obviously you know you had to bring the golden horde if you're going to go ahead and, and throw the rule book out you definitely want the golden horde there. So that's going to be the players on all three of the red team is going to be golden horde so you're going to see lots of horses, horse archers, missiles and obviously kind of a smaller contingent of infantry on this side because their infantry isn't as great for the Golden Horde. It's kind of like a lot of the surrounding areas making up their roster. Then over on the other side, we have a wealth of factions, basically all, you know, Eastern European slash Eastern. So we have Kiev right here. Again, Kiev actually do do pretty decently when it comes to the melee engagement. They have kind of these hybrid horse archers right here with dismounted horse archers that can output a lot of fire and actually get pretty stuck in to the infantry engagement. You can see that they've got uh, pretty decent shields. Obviously, you're going to have kind of, you know, more, uh, you know, surf infantry like so. And then obviously the cavalry as well, you know, they kind of do sprawl a large amount of their roster kind of from the more eastern nomadic style of combat. Then in the center, we do have the Polish, I believe. I'll be able to tell by the look of their knights. Yes, we do. We have the awesome looking Polish knights. So goddamn clean. Uh, so these, you know, kind of uh, European forces will be diving headlong into the Golden Horde, trying to repel them. And then over on this far left-hand side, we have an army from Lithuania. So these guys moving in. So maybe the Commonwealth is forming a little bit earlier this day. And you can see their knights forming up on the battle line already. So it should be really, really exciting to see how this one does kick off. Because this is going to be so much cavalry, so much movement in the battlefield. Um, and when the infantry does finally clash, it's going to be, you know, very interesting to see who comes out on top as well. So right off the bat, we are moving forward with some horse archers here from Lithuania, pushing in their bowmen, going to be popping shots off. And this is kind of a unit you don't really get to see too often, especially from a faction like Lithuania, is horse archers. Normally you just go with the standard knights with them, um, but yeah, they can definitely output a lot of damage. And I think horse archers are a really, really interesting uh, interesting unit to bring. Oh yeah, and this is one of the really cool, well not cool, it's, uh, you know, just intriguing units for the Golden Horde. These are basically in history, these were like slaves which were always pushed in front of the Golden Horde uh, army and they were basically just like a human sacrifice to the enemy ranks to like absorb ammunition and stuff like that. They were basically just thrown forward kind of like a, a Russian charge in World War II. You either go forward or die or you run back and you die. Uh, it's really really brutal. Um, and obviously they are kind of just, you know, like the, the Skaven rats of the historical world, really. Or the Skaven slaves of the historical world. A brutal unit, but they're basically there just to absorb some ammunition as a, as a meat shield. Um, and uh, that's going to be the forces. Also, I love whenever there's like a nomadic faction in the game, you always see the tents like this. Oh, God, damn, that's bright. Jesus Christ. Uh, I always love that in, like, this is like a small addition to detail that I feel like Total War games tend to, like, lack. Like, just these small details like this um, become less and less every single year, which is a, a shame. So right now, the forces are getting very close, and it's going to be very, very uh, close on the infantry engagement. As you can see, most people have really gone with the heavier cavalry. Oh, no, here we go. The Lithuanian cavalry getting very close. I wonder, because they are like a skirmisher. They've got javelins. I wonder if they're going to be trying to throw javelins at the Golden Horde. But the Golden Horde are going to be able to pull out of there, warn off them with the heavy lancers. And again, these heavy, heavy lancers just do look pretty goddamn crazy you know obviously if you get on the end of that these guys are going to do some serious damage there's a little bit of skirmishing going off um cavalry moving up the slaves kind of screening a lot of these horse archers are simply just trying to pick away you know kind of focus down one unit in its entirety you can see the arrow fire coming in just you know trying to bring down a couple of these guys make a, a chink in the armor uh, but the shield wall managing to repel most of these missiles at first, which is always pretty effective. This cavalry is going to move in and take out these slaves, just kind of get them out of there. I mean, obviously, they're going to break almost immediately. 
Um, but again, it's kind of just more of having them as a nuisance. But it would have been better just to leave them on the, in their front line. Just, you know, this is kind of like a, a waste with them. But I guess that's, you know, they're probably so cheap that it really doesn't even matter. And the Lithuanian player is just going to clear it out. We're only getting a push up here on the left-hand side with the Golden Horde. Moving up with some of their mounted heavy horse archers. And one of the great things about the horse archers for the Golden Horde is they basically double as, or I guess most of like the eastern faction, like nomadic factions, most of their horse archers act as a, a normal cavalry unit anyway. It's just kind of like a bonus if they are skilled with the bow. So it doesn't, you know, just seeing a unit of horse archers, you normally think, oh, it's a horse archer unit. It's probably not that great and good in melee, but these Golden Horde horses are actually really, really decent in melee. And we're going to be trying to kind of rotate around. However, Kiev are going to be moving more of their dismounted horse archers. Uh, yeah, they are, they are dismounted knight archers over onto this side to kind of cover this position. Because I believe the archers will have a larger range than these horse archers. Oh, and we've got a big old engagement over here, which we missed the initial charge of as the Lithuanians throw everything they have. Like, there's like six, seven units of cavalry in this engagement as the archer fire comes in from the horse archers back there. We are diving into this, you know, this cluster as the Lithuanians for everything they have again against the heavy lancers of the Golden Horde. And I'm not sure how successful they're going to be. More cavalry comes in to clear out this supporting infantry. Yeah, I mean, it's literally like one unit versus four or five right now. But that quality is obviously so huge in the Golden Horde. More of the uh, Lithuanian knights come around. I believe this could be a Polish knight unit as well. Uh, right here. Heavily armoured knights there in full play. You know, these are just... Well, these are Polish Lithuanian knights. Uh, they're going to be going right forward as well, I imagine. However, the Golden Horde have formed up a beautiful charge like so. And they're about to come colliding in. Oh, yeah, we have to... We have to go ahead and get that as a screenshot, right? Oh, man. That is, uh, yeah, something special right there. Woo! And then we're going to go back on. And that Golden Horde cavalry charge is going to come flying into the ranks. And just really output a serious amount of damage. You can see, like, that 20 of these knights are already down. And, you know, whilst this cavalry engagement is going on, the horse archers are racking up. But the sheer number of horses over here are really pushing them back. Another cavalry charge there as the Golden Horde throws in more and more horses to try and stem any bleeding that comes from this fight and lots of infantry have now fully engaged down on this flank but there are still just so many horses we're seeing the entire um, the entire Kiev the cavalry force over here as well which is pretty uh, surprising it's going to mean that they don't really have a lot over on this right hand side and even the Polish knights are coming over here so there is such a huge emphasis of cavalry movement on in this battle right now and on this left flank you can see that the you know more elite Golden Horde horses are coming out on top on these kind of uh, you know, individual fights, but there's just so much cavalry breaking through and looking to push on. A lot of the infantry right here as well. There's a really nice movement with the infantry being reinforced into this cavalry engagement. They kind of act as like a, a glue to hold these horses in place, allowing more of the Golden Horde cavalry to go elsewhere. Because even though they are heavily outnumbered, by horses on this flank it seems like the infantry are really acting as a nice kind of buffer however gaps are appearing i mean obviously the gaps are going to appear and now the lithuanians are pushing hard on this flank and i wouldn't be surprised if you saw a big push by the polish now to engage this so the lithuanians can also take these guys off guard you can see they're moving around this flank basically completely outflanking the middle force right now and they're actually going to get a good charge off on this cavalry as well well, I guess the player is microing elsewhere because his cavalry has been caught out a little bit. And they do need to be very, very careful as the cavalry engagement. Oh, my God. The Lithuanians have just completely enveloped the Golden Horde on this right flank with the support of their allies surrounding them, charging on, getting a really nice charge off there before they end up breaking onto some of these elite lancers. Another charge going in, but it's going to be the final charge of these Polish Lithuanian Knights. And you'll see them breaking very, very soon. But the infantry, you know, coming in, supporting the Lithuanians, they're managing to just to completely overwhelm their opponents. And now this flank is completely open up. If we go on the other flank, we'll stick slow-mo just for a little bit because there's so much cavalry movement. We want to try and keep track of everything. You are now seeing the charges coming off here by the Golden Horde. 
moving in and uh, yeah, fighting away. And I really do like these battles and there's not a ton of rules because it kind of, you know, each faction tries to play to its strength. Um, you end up having the Golden Horde, who is a very heavy nomadic faction. Uh, you know, they can bring a lot more horses and it makes sense for their rosters to do so. Um, and, you know, if the Polish want to try and match them with that or the Lithuanians want to try and match with the horses, you know, they're obviously more than welcome to do so. So it's quite cool to see kind of, you know, a fight where it is just an all-out brawl and you're seeing a lot of heavy knights. And it's also great to see, you know, battles where, you know, the armies aren't just very similar in their makeup. Because there was, you know, a lot of the time, that a lot of battles in history, you know, they all had kind of their own strengths and weaknesses within the armies. Um, and that, you know, that meant that players ended up playing to them strengths. So it's always fun to see that. Um, indeed, and also I guess as we as this battle is commencing, you guys can take kind of a nice little overlook of the engagement. I want to always give a big shout out to the guys who played in this battle. We'll see their names at the end, um, and we'll give them a massive, you know, a massive round of applause because they consistently send me in awesome medieval twelve twelve battles. Um, and you know, without them, you and guys wouldn't be seeing these awesome engagements on the channel. So yeah, big shout out to them in this, uh, yeah, on the channel for sure. Back to the massacre that is at hand. Uh, take a look at the balance of power bar really quickly. We can see that numbers wise, uh, yeah, both numbers are counting pretty similar. Only around about 600 men in it right now. Um, the Golden Horde, who are the enemy man count, did start off with a couple hundred more. But honestly, not that crazy whatsoever. And now the infantry engagement is going pretty crazy. And it seems like the Golden Horde are ripping through the Kievian front line right now however they are going to be meeting the archers and as i said these archers can do a really decent job as like a frontline infantry so we're going to be seeing them trying to push back the rust infantry uh, traitors in the midst the center line has held pretty firm as the cavalry engagement is still going on um, and it does seem like the Lithuanians have been brought down slightly. They do still have a lot of men left, but not as many as you may expect after that kind of you know, huge cavalry shift on the right flank. And now we do have some Tartar horse archers as well, just focusing into these big clumps, uh, trying to bring them down as much as possible. But we are seeing this flank completely carved in now as the Polish advance their front line, getting stuck in there. I love the, the mix of shields in the Polish line as well. And they should find a pretty easy time of it, honestly, breaking through this. Yeah, I think you're going to see the front line here breaking pretty quickly because these are just auxiliary units, nothing too crazy whatsoever. So I imagine the Polish, uh, you know, these are just mounted junior knights, should break their way through this and then, like, kind of rotate around, especially as more and more of these units do turn up. Yeah, these guys are not to be messed with, obviously. A pretty hefty unit, especially with some more knights moving around as well. And when the gaps start to appear, you're going to see a lot more knights moving in. But the archer fight is finding its mark on a lot of these guys, you know, taking them down, whittling them down. And the cavalry is dominating this area. You're seeing the cavalry moving around here because there's just so much engaged over there. It's allowing the rest of these horses to move around. And I imagine immediately charge off on the Lithuanian horse archers. Or maybe even onto the back of his infantry. You can see the Lithuanians are breaking on this front line. People have spent so much money on their horses and archers this day that you're going to be seeing very, very, you know, kind of lower quality infantry. I think the junior knights from Poland are probably the, the heaviest infantry that we've got this day. And I honestly don't know how great they are. So the cavalry is definitely the name of the game. Um, and I mean, for the most part, you're seeing a lot of this cavalry moving around. Oh, I hope we haven't had a desync. This does look like a desync type of thing. But basically, any unit standing still are just dead. So we can kind of ignore them. Our men return to the fight. Back there. Yeah, the front line has completely opened up now. And the Polish are going around. However, the Polish general is getting very, very close in. And as he tries to retreat out of there, just because he's under heavy cavalry charging, he is getting hammered by archer fire. Some of the junior knights are having to move in now and try and cover their king as he falls back from the battle. And doing a pretty successful job of that, holding these guys in place for a little bit. As more and more reinforcements turn up, we are seeing the horse archers continue to throw our shots. How many kills? 17, 120, and 11. So not bad, but not all, not very good either. Cavalry moving around as well, diving deep into the Polish line and enveloping some of these knights. 
as more and more reinforcements move up. How's this left flank doing? You have a Golden Horde breaking forward. There are some heavy, like this is a pretty heavy contingent. You've got heavy archers covered by halberds. So they should be able to hold this position of the battlefield. And it does see like Kiev have done a good job. They've managed to deploy some of these halberds, or the Polish have actually supported, deployed some halberds over to this fight. And they are just engaging lightly armed with tartar horse archers. A bite should actually definitely go in favor of the halberds here. You know, especially when we do have some heavy Russian knights. These horse archers are kind of what you expect from the, the horse archer department, just lightly armored, fast moving. Oh, and there we go, one of the generals going down, I imagine. Oh, that's actually the, the Kiersian Rus, uh, Rus general going down, and there's more cavalry moving around in the distance right now. So it's pretty deadly. Losing the general is, is going to be a big blow. Oh, but the general goes off back here as one of the, uh, one of the, uh, the Lithuanian general knows, now goes down. Oh no, so two of the generals are being slain on the battlefield and some of the loosely armoured cavalry are now breaking their way in onto these horse archers. As I said, these Mongol horse archers are more than capable of you know, holding their own in melee, so they're you know, going to be more than, uh, more than able to you know, repel them lightly armoured cavalry charges. But as you can see, the battle is devolving into an absolute mess right now with the Polish and Lithuanians after losing their general not really having a lot left whatsoever and now we're just breaking out into like huge cavalry or like individual cavalry engagements as the archers continue to pick off more and more soldiers as the fight just yeah doesn't really have much left in it right you know a large portion of these units are just getting you know hammered away uh the polish knights are just i guess trying to get through this swamp area i think they're moving really slowly because of the swamp um, so they're just trying to pull out of that battle as quickly as, as possible. But this seems to be like where the last kind of stand is being held right now. Um, and the Golden Horde are just outnumbering their opponents very, very heavily. Over 700, 800 men in it now in favor of the Golden Horde. Which is really surprising considering, you know, how much that Lithuanian Polish and Kiev cavalry charge went down on that right flank. We have some amazing looking Polish knights forming up, ready to uh, yeah, ready to get stuck in in more of this heavier horse on horse fighting. <laughs> to not help the wounded fight, brave words there. I guess, you know, there's no point in helping the wounded if you're gonna lose a battle. And more of the cavalry are breaking out, looking to try and pick off any of these horse archers back here. And that's one of the great things as well about having a large contingent of horse archers in your army. Is that, you know, a decent amount of the time, you can just go ahead and once they retreat from battle and they come back from routing, they'll then just be picking away at shots, you know. They can be deadly at range, obviously. Even when they are few in number, they can still fire in a couple of shots that can, you know, help a melee just like you're seeing in the distance right now. And a lot of these horse archers are running severely low on missile fire. It's a real shame though, it seems like the battle has desynced a little because it's quite hard to tell what's left. I think like basically everything that is just isn't moving in the background is just dead. But it's like, it's, yeah, and I guess stuff like, but then like stuff like this all of a sudden moves as units come back and we get another brutal charge there against the, against the Polish line. And it's always, it's always so random when a decent does come in because I'm sure it, you know, played fine for them and then something just happens. But nonetheless, I don't think it really affects the battle too much. You can generally tell what's around and what's still left to fight. Um, and on this right flank, it does seem that they are completely broken now. Some cavalry in the wings still kind of engaging away. Some Ross infantry still left fighting. Trying to pull back, obviously, avoiding this uh, spear unit as best as they can. But they might end up breaking. Obviously, losing the generals in, in the entire, like, blue alliance has been pretty big. Now the Golden Horde are just running away with it. Some brave soldiers are making their last stand. After cavalry charge, after cavalry charge comes in. And the archer point blank hits these dismounted Polish knights. Really, I, I'm, I'm super surprised about the outcome of this battle. Um, after, you know, what a devastating assault was on that flank. But now these horse archers are just roaming around 
picking away against the Polish Knights. They're being engaged, obviously, by the, the heavy warriors here. And being broken, but there will be no escape for them. I'm sure they'll be run down. And now at this point, there's hardly anything left. Just kind of rogue groups of units still kind of scattered around the battlefield. So many horse archers left remaining. And I imagine, yeah, there's only 500 men standing now. We can probably just triple speed through the last of this battle because I think this is literally kind of just the last stand. A couple units of archers still left remaining, kind of picking off shots. A small infantry kind of remnants right here. Um, it's actually cavalry on cavalry right now. But again, it's only going to be a matter of time until they break. And there's still like, you know, 2,000 of, yeah, 2,600 units or men from the Golden Horde still left remaining out of their, what, 6,000 men they brought? Was it 6,000? 7,000 men they brought. So still a, you know, large amount of their army still left remaining. And that is going to be fine. It's so weird. Like, maybe there wasn't a desync then. Maybe the players just literally left their units roaming around. Because normally when there's a desync, you don't see the kills. So... I don't know what happened there. But either way, we can see. I want to see who... Re like, and obviously, big shout out to all six of these players. Thank you guys so much for sending in this replay. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and taking a look at the kills here, you can see, as I said, the Kievian Rusk uh, hall, uh, archers, dismounted archers, can just do so much serious damage because, you know, they, they fire a handful of volleys I and mean, then you get them stuck into melee engagements and they still just do a great job um, at the time. Let's see what cavalry did the best out of everyone's. Uh, the Polish horse archers, again, some of them doing pretty decently. Um, over on the other side, let's see. I want to see who got the most cavalry kills. 299 on this unit. Um, is that the highest? So the cavalry kills, I guess, are quite low. But I imagine that's mainly because a lot of the kills on the cavalry came on other cavalry units. And that's kind of why, you know, there's a lot less units for the horses to kill. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that battle. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.